Hey, this is Dalton Smith over at homeprojectsconsulting.com. I want to welcome you to another video. This one is load-bearing walls, and this video is really important. I guess they're all pretty important when you're doing a remodel, but this video is going to help you determine whether or not you're moving a load-bearing wall and where your load-bearing walls are at. So this is a top view of a house, okay? And this is really simple, guys. If you want to know whether or not you have a load-bearing wall, you just go outside and look at your house um, this is called the ridge of the house here. Any wall that's running with the ridge like this, so any wall that would be, uh, let's see, here's the ridge. Any wall that would be going this direction would be a load bearing wall because all of your ceiling rafters in your house go this direction. And what your load bearing wall does is holds up and braces these, uh, ceiling joists. Um, so that's the easiest way to tell. If you have a house that is an L shape like this, um, your rafters are going to be going this direction. So any wall that's moving along the ridge, so a wall here, a wall here, uh, a wall here, they're all going to be load bearing walls. Any wall that's going with the rafter is not load bearing. When you get into this area here, it's kind of hard to tell what's load bearing and what's not. You really need to get up in the attic and see, you know, where they split. There's a lot of different ways to frame out uh, a hip in a house like that. That's what you call it when this comes together. And, um, yeah, you'll have to go up into the attic and take a look. That would be a good time to call uh, Home Projects Consulting and get a peek in the attic with me and see what is going on. Uh, so that's the easiest way to tell whether or not a wall is load-bearing. I do want to show you real quick how to make a load-bearing wall. Um, so let's say, let's say you were moving a load-bearing wall and you had to frame up a new wall. So let's say this is your entry here. And let's say you had a wall here and you tore the whole wall out and you say, you know, you've got like an exposed rafter here, right here. Or I guess, no, you wouldn't. You would have exposed rafters like this, right? Underneath your sheetrock every 16 inches, hopefully, maybe 24. And you gotta support these boogers, okay? So uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna check your clearance here. Usually a womanized board will span itself and a half when it's doubled up into a header. So if you have a two by 12 board, no, 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 a two by six board, it could do itself six foot plus half of itself again so nine foot a 12 foot board would do itself plus it's half of itself again so that would be 18 feet that's womanized that's pressure treated and that's just rule of thumb uh so here we go so let's say we have a 10 foot ceiling here we're going to put in a two by six so what you do is you have a two by six here okay and it's going to go from side to side before you put in this two by six though which is tech nickel five and a half inches what you're going to do is you're going to come in with two by fours here okay and these two by fours are going to run to the very top to the very bottom of the floor and you're going to cut them five and a half inches short of the rafter here you're going to install um you're going to screw these studs into the wall with some pretty serious screws. I like to use a three and a half inch screw when I'm doing this sort of deal. Uh, then screw these guys together. Um, and then you'll take your header in and actually set your header up there. And that's how you build a header. Nothing, nothing to it, no big deal. Uh, again, this span, since that's a six inch header, uh, it couldn't be bigger than a nine foot gap there. Um, and that's that's rule of thumb. If I was you, I would get an engineer involved if it was something really scary. But if it's a small area like this, you know, a little eight or 10 foot opening, it's not any sort of big deal. So anyway, that's how you determine whether or not a wall is load bearing. And that's how you build a load bearing wall. If you have any questions, email me at Dalton at homeprojectsconsulting.com. Um, you can go to the website and fill out uh, a questionnaire there. Um, so home project homeprojectconsulting.com, what it is is uh, I'm an on-demand contractor and I come into your home via FaceTime or uh, Skype or Messenger or whatever you want and I, I look at your project and walk you through it. 
Uh, I can help with bidding. I can help with hiring. Uh, I can walk you through all sorts of weird things like this. And I can do a little bitty, uh, you know, just like a little one hour call with you. Or I can do the whole project with you. I've got 20 years experience and I really like helping with projects. I'm good at explaining things and I've run quite a few jobs over the phone now. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to meeting you. I hope this helps. If you have any more questions, um, come and find me on my website. Thank you.